Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Patron week is upon us and that means we've taken to the polls to see what it is the most ardent supporters of the channel have decided upon for me to cover this month. And this time around, everyone wanted me to talk about a theme that's got a bit of charm to it. Premiering in the January 2006 core set, The Lost Millennium, the Charmer monsters would become one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most beloved and iconic series of monsters, not only for their potentially wild effects, but also their absolutely gorgeous designs. It's basically the game's own version of those cute girls doing cute things slice of life shows, so you can see why it has so much appeal. Over the years, they've had retrains, upgrades, animal companions, upgraded animal companions, and have even evolved into being some of the most widely used Link monsters of the modern era, to a point where I'd say they rival nightmares in their ease of access and potent power. But how in the world did this all come about? And how does a troop of spellcasters focused on their own attribute come together to form a cohesive deck? Well, that's what I'm here to teach you today. We'll get familiar with all these cards, find out what benefits they possess, then see what friends we can find that will help us channel our power. It's time to get into the Avatar State with Charmers Explained. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. So what's the deal with Charmers? Well, as it turns out, that distinction is actually more vibes-based than mechanics-based. In fact, in addition to Charmers, we have Familiar Possessed, Unpossessed of the Familiar, the Familiar themselves. There's a whole slew of different flavors of elementally themed practitioners of the arcane art. And since many of the monsters all do the same thing, just geared towards their particular element, we'll be looking over each group of cards, noting any deviations from the norm, instead of going over each card individually. Though, to help with keeping each element in mind, let's introduce you to the core cast of characters. Aosa is associated with Earth, Area with Water, Win with, a uh, Wind, Hita with Fire, Lin with Light, and Dark with, you know, Dark. Let's begin with the original, well, kind of original, Charmers, since Lina and Dark showed up at a later date. They're all level 3 spellcaster flip monsters with 500 attack and 1500 defense, and their flip effect targets a monster your opponent controls of its same attribute, and gives control of it to you as long as you control that Charmer. Now, stealing monsters is a pretty sweet effect. The problem is that the Charmers have quite a few sturdy hurdles to overcome. One, they're attribute specific. This isn't so much of a problem if you bring them out of the side deck, as they could potentially be good counter picks against mono attribute decks that you expect to find in a tournament, but against anything that uses multiple attributes, it'll be pretty hit or miss. Second, it's a flip monster, meaning that the effect is very slow. So unless you have an effect that'll flip it up at quick effect speed, you have to wait through the turn you set it, your opponent's turn, and then your next turn. This leads to issue number three. Technically, if your opponent attacks your face down Charmer, you've sped up the clock by one turn. But now the Charmer has to survive a battle, and 1500 defense isn't going to stop much. And that's even if your opponent attacks at all, and doesn't use some kind of removal effect. Suffice it to say, by themselves, they aren't a very good value proposition. Especially since taking light and dark monsters was off the table for the early days, so without outside help, even the element of surprise can't help them. Next up, let's talk about the familiar possessed monsters, and they have some very interesting card design. They're each level 4 spellcasters with 1850 attack and 1500 defense, and they can be special summoned by sending their associated charmer monster and a monster of its same attribute from the field to the grave. But the outrageous part is that they can be special summoned like this from the hand or main deck. Yeah, it's kind of like summoning from the extra deck, something we don't see on very many cards outside of this theme. In fact, the only other example is in the Charmer continuity. Now, nothing is stopping you from summoning them in other ways, but if summoned by this method, they can deal piercing battle damage. I think the idea is to cash in the monster that you steal with the Charmer so you don't lose it to removal, which is a pretty sweet idea. They even get a bit better with the introduction of the Lina and Dark version. They work exactly the same way, but if summoned by their effect, Lina adds a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your deck to your hand, and Dark adds a level 3 or 4 light spellcaster from your deck to your hand if summoned this way. That's a strange effect since Lila can search any member of the theme, and Dark only searches versions of Lina, but does mean it can be splashed in any deck running level 3 and 4 light spellcasters. Oh hey Dogmatica, how's it going? This is some very cool design, and I kind of hope we see more of it, since needing a specific, very tiny monster and a matching pet isn't the easiest condition to fulfill. But I can't deny how satisfying it is for these cards to jump out of nowhere and deck your opponent. 
Next up we have the Cataclysm Charmers, though I currently have no idea why they're called that. There is this interesting series of Cataclysm monsters that are also element based and released in the same set as the same attributed Charmer Link monster, but what connections they have to these older cards, I can't say. The Cataclysm Charmers consist of Avalanching Ausa, Raging Area, Blazing Hita, and Storming Wind, and each is a level 4 spellcaster monster with 800 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn, contribute a monster of its attribute, except itself, to special summon a monster of the same attribute from your hand, but any monster summoned this way is destroyed if that charmer leaves the field. This has a bit more utility than the base charmers, since you can actually build around this effect, which is very useful if you have cheap fodder monsters that you can easily deploy so you can mobilize big threats, and you can even do some tricky stuff to bypass the drawbacks. By flipping any of of those monsters face down, either by way of Book of Moon or Eclipse, the lingering condition goes away, and now you get a giant monster out for free. But as it turns out, the extra deck is a way better place to source your monsters from, so these don't really get much usage. For it to become viable, the monsters that you summon would have to be outrageously powerful, and that would be disastrous. Next up we have our channelers, and like the last section, we don't have all the members. This time around, we only have Win. Hita, and Ausa, each one being a level 5 monster with 1850 attack and 1500 defense. They're always treated as charmer monsters, and if a monster you control of its attribute is destroyed by battle while this card is in your hand, you can special summon this monster from your hand. You can also discard them and another monster of the same attribute for an effect, but it keeps you from activating the effects of monsters outside its associated attribute. Win adds a wind monster with 1500 defense or less, except a copy of this card from your deck to your hand. Hita adds a fire monster with a higher attack than the secondary monster to discarded for this effect from your deck to your hand, and Ausa adds any earth monster with 1850 attack or less, and that matches the type of either discarded monster from your deck to your hand. This means you have a ridiculous range of search options for a number of mono type decks. Hita can pitch shell and volcanics to get some great fire monsters, earth is just chock full of amazing cards, and while wind doesn't have a lot of great themes, Yosenju's, Battle Wasps, and Dragoonity can certainly appreciate the boost in consistency, and maybe even the discard outlet. I wouldn't be surprised to see the in certain decks in the future, though I can't deny that shutting off a number of hand traps on your turn can be a bit of a hindrance. Still, whenever those fall out of favor and you need the gas, make sure to tune in to these channelers. Next up we have the Link Monsters. Each one is a Link 2 with 1850 attack, requiring any two monsters, including a monster that matches the attribute of that Link Monster as material. Each one is treated as a familiar possessed monster, trust me, that name addition becomes relevant later. If any of them are destroyed by a battle or an opponent's card effect while in its owner's monster zone, you can add a monster of its attribute with 1500 defense or less from your deck to your hand. And once per turn, you can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard of its same attribute and special summon it to your side of the field to a zone this card points to. So so while some of these will see more play than others, this is a fantastic cycle of monsters that can cover a variety of situations. Any deck that's Link friendly can play them, and if the ones you can make line up with power cards you can expect your opponent to be playing, this can easily tip the scales in your favor. For instance, if your opponent has a Cash Tira Fenrir Engrave, all you have to do is make an Ausa and blammo, now you have the modern age Panker Tops. Oh, heck, this can even get Panker Tops too! From Dark Stealing Opposing Destroyer Phoenix Enforcers, to Hita nabbing Spare Ash Blossoms to fuel other summons, these cards are absolutely fantastic, and really bring the charmers full circle, as these really do fulfill the promise of the early flip monsters, letting you use your opponent's cards against them, all while being bundled with a search effect because… why not? Seriously, whatever possessed them to make these cards deserves some credit. Currently, that's all the variations on the Charmers, but they wouldn't be able to perform their feats of magic without their familiars, and they've even got their own cards. Like the Charmers, there are a lot of similarities between them. They're all level 4 monsters with 1500 attack and 200 defense, and you can only control a single copy of each of them, and can be special summoned from the hand if you control a spellcaster monster, which I feel is pretty appropriate. And fun fact, all of these are advanced versions of the little monsters you see in the Charmers art, which they themselves are existing monsters from other cards. That being said, they all do have their own unique effects. Inari Fire is a fire pyro monster that used to be Foxfire, the only effect monster out of these original familiars, and once per turn, during your next standby phase, after this face-up card on the field was destroyed by a card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon it from your grave. Ron Ryu is a wind dragon monster that used to be Petite Dragon, and if destroyed by a battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can target a monster with 1500 attack and 200 defense in your grave except a copy of this card, and special summon it. Nefarious Archfiend 
Eater of Nefariousness is an Earth Beast monster that used to be Archfiend Marmot of Nefariousness. Say all that three times fast. And once per turn, during your opponent's end phase, if this card is in your grave, you can target a face-up monster you control and destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card. And lastly, we have the most interesting of the bunch, Gigabyte, a water reptile monster that used to be Gigabyte, and when this card is destroyed by a battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon a monster with 1500 attack and 200 defense from your deck, except a copy of this card. What makes Gigabyte so interesting is that this is the same monster in the Gaga Gigo line of monsters, which would connect the Charmers with the entirety of the Marauding Captain storyline, which in turn connects them to all of Dual Terminal by way of Win the Wind Charmer, but I already made a short about that, so I'm gonna avoid going down the lore rabbit hole this time. Oh, though I would like to mention that there currently isn't a familiar monster for Happy Lovers and Metabat, the two creatures that accompany Lina and Dark. These four form a pretty interesting resource loop that can work in any spellcaster deck you want to run. For example, Archfiend Eater can destroy Inari Fire to summon itself, then Inari will revive itself at the beginning of the next turn. And if you pop Ronryu or Gigabyte, then you can either recur or grab another monster. Something cool is that they check for certain stats, not an archetype, which is conceptually a nice touch, but it turns out that at time of recording, there aren't really a lot of good targets outside our band of critters. Thankfully, since all of them function in similar ways and are focused on supporting spellcasters, not individual attributes. These also make for a great rank 4 engine, giving you access to that toolbox of problem-solving solutions. Plus, you get to have the fun of collecting a whole bunch of little Pokémon, that's always nice. But they don't stay stage 2 for long, because like their charmer companions, they grow up into another little sub-theme, the Awakened of the Possessed. They're all level 5 monsters, carry over their types and attributes from their base form, and have the same interesting inherent summoning effect as the familiar possessed monsters. You know, the one that summons them from hand or deck, though in this case, the required monsters are any face-up spellcaster, not just that specific charmer, and a face-up level 4 or lower monster that matches its attribute. If these monsters are sent from the field to the grave, you can add a possessed speller trap card, or a spiritual art card that names its matching attribute, from your deck to your hand. They also all have specific effects that trigger when summoned using their own condition. Greater Anari Fire burns your opponent equal to the original attack of a monster they control, your choice. Rasen Ryu returns a card your opponent controls to the hand. Nefarious Sir Archfiend special summons any level 4 or lower monster in your grave but negates its effects. And Gagigobite sends a random card from your opponent's hand to the grave. Then each player draws a card. This is a huge improvement over the familiar possessed, because not only are they easier to summon, they're chock full of a lot more effects. And once again, nothing is keeping them from being summoned by other means. So if you you just need a level 5 monster on board, especially so you can send them to the grave for that search, you're more than welcome to do so. Glad to see they ended up experimenting more with that summoning procedure, and hopefully it's a wake-up call for more interesting design. Alright, that's all the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. First, I want to cover the Spiritual Art Normal Trap cards, as they're a big part of the Charmer's original flavor. Once again, they all follow a similar formula, you just tribute a monster of its associated attribute to get a benefit. Earth Art Kuragane special summons a level 4 or lower Earth monster from your grave except the attributed monster. Fire Art Kuranai burns your opponent for the original attack of the attributed monster. Water Art Aoi looks at your opponent's hand and sends one card from it to the grave. And Wind Art Miyabi targets a card your opponent controls and places that card on the bottom of the deck. Now, unlike the past few paragraphs, Lina and Dark have representatives in this section as well, but they're a little funky. Light Art Hijiri targets a banished monster and special summons it, unless your opponent reveals a trap card in their hand, in which case, this card's effects are negated. Now, that's not too bad because trap cards aren't exactly the most popular of card types, and normally people are going to put them down on the field as fast as they can, so they can deploy them as fast as they can. So it's not quite as egregious as our next example, Dark Spirit Art Greed. It tributes a dark monster to draw two cards, but your opponent can reveal a spell in their hand to negate it. Now, a lot of decks today are meant to be pure gas, you want to play them as soon as possible to advance your board state, so you could sneak this by every once in a while. Heck, there are even some quick play spells that people are going to set onto the field so they can use them. But some of the better spells in the game do have hard once per turn restrictions, and unless there are some extenuating circumstances, your opponent isn't going to set those. So now, there's a card that 2 for 2's you, that becomes an enormous minus if your opponent holds on to a triple tactics talent. Now, if there was a bigger reward associated with the risk, that'd be one thing, but this is about on par with any archetypal draw 2 spell, except for the fact that, as a trap card, is much slower, so you end up doing a lot more for a lot less. But it's not all bad, uh, they they did decide to put the Dark Magical Circle in here, thus tying Dark Magician into this tangled multiversal plot. Be on the lookout for the big multiverse video, by the way, Emini's been cooking. 
Spirit Charmers is a quick play spell card that has you discarding a card. On resolution, you take two cards from your deck with different names from each other that are Charmer Monsters, Familiar Possessed Monsters, and or Possessed Spell and Trap cards, and you add one of them to your hand and set the other one. This card, by itself, solves a lot of problems that the Charmers have. Because it's a quick play, you can activate this on your opponent's end phase, setting the exact right Charmer you need to steal a monster, while grabbing you a support spell or trap card in the form of the Possessed. Then you flip up that Charmer on your turn, take a monster, then use its effects as needed until you turn it into a familiar Possessed monster. Speaking of which, it might seem strange that you have the option of adding those to your hand, since they work best when summoned directly from the deck. However, since you can normal summon them, they pair very well with our familiars, giving you either a rank 4 play or access to one of the Awakened of the Possessed monsters. This is a stupendous little card, and when it comes to making the deck cohesive, this lays a lot of the groundwork for it, rather than them being tech picks and other established themes. Now that's the spirit. Awakening of the Possessed is a continuous spell card that gives all your monsters a 300 attack boost for each different attribute you control. Charmer and Familiar Possessed monsters you control can't be destroyed by card effects, and if any number of spellcaster monsters with an original attack of 1850 are normal or special summoned to your field, you draw a card. Uh... Yeah, this card kicks a million butts, holy cow. And not only will the draw trigger work when you summon your familiar possessed monsters in whatever way you do it, it also triggers when you make your charmer link monsters, which are also treated as familiar possessed, which is a nice touch. The boost turns them from mildly well-statted monsters into getting over that 2,000 point threshold all by themselves, with more varied attributes giving you even more of a buff. And there's nothing saying you can't have more than one of these on the field, causing that boost to skyrocket. Though, thankfully, the draw is a hard once per turn. With a little bit of investment, your familiar possessed monsters will become powerhouses all their own. Just make sure you don't confuse this spell with the monster lineup that's also called Awakened of the Possessed. I don't really think that was a good idea. Grand Spiritual Art Ichirin is a field spell card that negates your opponent's first monster effect that resolves each turn while you control a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense. During your main phase, you can reveal a spellcaster monster from your hand, and if you do, add a monster with that same attribute but with 1500 attack and 200 defense from your deck to your hand, and if you do, shuffle the revealed card into the deck. I didn't include this with the other spiritual arts because it just does not line up with how the rest of them work. That being said though, this is a pretty sweet card. Like, you get a free piece of monster negation while you have one of your on-theme spellcasters on board, and lets you put your familiar possessed or charmer monsters back into the deck to give you a familiar. Other than that though, they're really isn't much to talk about here. It's a great consistency tool that has some built-in disruption to help you run circles around your opponent. Possessed Partnerships is a normal trap card that special summons a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your hand or grave in attack position or face down defense position. Then if you control monsters with two or more different attributes, you can destroy a face up card on the field. You can also banish this card from your grave, then target a possessed continuous spell or trap card in your grave and place it face up on your field. But you can only use one effect per turn and only once per turn. So you get a free monster from your deck and you get to recycle some of your most powerful cards. And in the case of that trap card, means it'll be in play right from the get-go without having to wait a turn to flip it up. Then you randomly just get removal if you have an established field, it's pretty great. And you know what else is great here? The art. I love it when summons turn into armor and equipment for the summoner, that is my jam! Unpossessed is a continuous trap card that keeps Charmer monsters you control from being destroyed by battle. If a familiar possessed monster you control attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during damage calculation only. And if any number of monsters you control are destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can special summon a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your deck, whose attribute is different from at least one of those destroyed monsters' original attributes on the field, in attack position or face down defense position. Wow, uh, this card does a lot. So right off the bat, it keeps your Charmer monsters from being destroyed by battle, which was one of my big complaints at the start of the video. But with this, you can ensure that that flip effect will at least have a chance to go off, with the continuous spell keeping them from being destroyed by effect to help you keep your stolen monster. The attack boost is hella good too, turning our familiar possessed into 2650 attack beat sticks even without any boost from our continuous spell. And remember, this counts our link monsters as well. And then it also has a replacement effect, because why not? You know, I'm gonna be honest, I came into this video not thinking much of charmers, but now I can see that they mean business, so you'd do well not to underestimate the unpossessed.
Alright, so that's all the Charmer cards, but what do we do with them? Well, the game plan already seems pretty succinct. Use our myriad of attack boosters to turn our familiars and their possessed into a crack fighting force, while using our trickier effects to gain advantage, whether it be by excessive burn damage or stripping away your opponent's resources. So our main focus should be on getting as many Spellcaster and Attribute Matters cards into the mix as possible to help bolster our game plan. So what can we play to help them out? First off, and this might sound sacrilegious here, but I already know we have a field spell, and while it's cool, and would totally recommend it as a way to keep a hand trap off your initial setup, I don't think it makes for a good long-term field spell. Secret Village of the Spellcasters, on the other hand, has you covered. Stopping a monster effect per turn is one thing. Keeping your opponent off spells forever? Whole other ballgame. When it comes to attributes, I can't recommend Elemental Grace Doriato enough. If we're looking to go full bore with the entire archetype spectrum, we can use our mastery of them to get this Doriato onto the board, and this gives us some great summon negates for our trouble. And since we're playing a bunch of spellcasters with different names, why not throw Magicalized Fusion into the mix? Quintet Magician is one heck of a board breaker, and with an attack stat like that, games are going to come to a close very quickly. Many of our support cards reference Spellcaster monsters with 1500 defense, and while they want you to use that to get Charmers, you know what else that includes? Dogmatica! Yeah, any of those cards can summon either form of Ecclesia, Cartesia, Theo, Quem, and the Golden Sword Soul. So Charmer Dogmatica isn't outside the realm of possibility. It's not like the Charmers need the extra deck, and can even help make easy Link 1s to enable their special summon from hand effects by way of Artemis the Magistus Moon Maiden. Also, that condition works with a surprising number of Gravekeeper's monsters, so, you know, there's that. Eda the Sun Magician was made specifically for this archetype, I have no doubt about it. You tutor out any Charmer face down, then flip it up during your opponent's turn to steal it. This is incredible. And because this is also a spellcaster with 1500 defense, it works with a lot of our support, so you basically have to run three of those. As for cards that work with our familiars, Lisa Starfrost makes its appearance again. By popping Gigabyte and Ron Ryu, you can get their effects online, and popping Inari Fire just means you get it back later. And with all these level 4 monsters lying around, it's pretty easy to slap a level 10 Synchro monster onto the board to go along with your charmers. I'll uh, leave it up to you which one I would recommend, but here's a hint, it's Barone. As for a silly tech pick, we should probably pay homage to the original attribute-centric Link monsters. For those not in the know, early Yu-Gi-Oh had monsters that would raise the attack of one attribute and decrease the attack of another. These got retrained in the Link era as Link 2s with similar effects, but required both materials to match up to that Link monster's attribute. And since both that theme and Charmers embody the idea of having multiple attributes, it's only fitting we try to incorporate Link Party. Yay! The more Charmer Links we get onto the board, the more effects we get out of this. And don't worry that it's going to be tough to summon all six with only downward pointing arrows, it checks your opponent's Link monsters too, so they can help pick up the slack. And if push comes to shove, we can always just steal our opponent's Links from their graveyard, hopefully with sideways pointing arrows, to help expand our field. Look, it can do 2000 burn damage, how can you pass that up? And that's all I have to say about Charmers. Gotta admit, the cards here have more bite to them than I actually thought they would. With monsters that can get surprisingly big out of nowhere, legacy support that actually fixes the problems of older cards while keeping the playstyle intact, and some truly bonkers effects that can flip the duel on its head, these spellcasters and their ferocious friends are a crew to be reckoned with. Though, to be fair, a lot of that power comes from their structure deck, to which I attribute most of their success. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Charmers flippin' awesome, or do they still not possess a threat? And which one is your favorite? Me? I like Alsa. the glasses are cute. Let me know in the comments, and while you're down there, make sure you like the video to boost it, subscribe to support the channel, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! to beat the algorithm. It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of Dragon Scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagidel, Andrew Newman, A Random Pup, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Chibi Gohan, Danny Bound, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hairbear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iskander711, John, Jordan, Julia Sneezer, Mana Charge, Marluxia a Girl, Molly Renata, Nathan Vig, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, RJ the Jank Monarch, 
Sammy Haim, Sir Knight JCB, Sky Buster Leo, Sophie, apparently, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Almento 5010, Aaron, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Blue Gem, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Emini, Eva Padilla, Hake Boyajian, Herbal D, In the House Like Carpet, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Carp, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo!, Manga Pages, Mary and James E. Piccata, Matt Simmons, Mega Combi, Michael Shima Bukuro, Nadia McCarthy, Nitromo, Ruxith Sarani, Shizuka Nijimura, Star Lord 777, Stephen Williamson, The Legendary Raven, Tucker Ordorn, and Zal Dureka, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, participate in monthly custom card reviews, and just keep the lights on in general, please consider becoming a patron by using that link in the description, or by becoming a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another deck full of Link monsters that span the attribute rainbow, check out this video I made covering nightmares. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.